Okay, so in this problem we're told a 6 centimeter diameter horizontal pipe gradually narrows to 4.5 centimeters. When water flows through the pipe at a certain rate, the gauge pressure in these two sections is 32 kilopascals and 24 kilopascals respectively. What is the volume rate of flow? So uh, let's go ahead and start off by drawing what's going on here. So we can imagine this is the pipe. So it starts off six, uh, six centimeters here. Uh, and then it's going to slowly uh, shrink down to a diameter of 4.5 centimeters. And so what we're trying to find is the volumetric flow rate. So that's what they want us to find here. And so you need to know the formula for that is Q, which is the flow rate, is equal to the area or, or the surface area. So you can imagine it like this is the surface area, uh, right, or the sectional area, cross-sectional area, multiplied by the velocity. And so this can be at either point. So you can say A1 times V1 or A2 times V2. And so uh, we know what the cross-sectional area is at any of the points, right? So the formula for that cross-sectional area is uh, pi r squared. So this is the formula for the cross or just an area of a circle, right? Because the cross-sectional area is just that of a circle. But keep in mind, uh, we're using diameter here. so. Uh, you should know the radius is the diameter divided by 2. So if you wanted to replace that, it would just be equal to d squared uh, or pi over 4 d squared. Right? So uh, we can choose it at the first point. So a1 time or pi over 4 d1 squared multiplied by v1. But notice we know the diameter there, but we don't know the velocity. So that's what we're going to go, uh, go ahead and have to solve for. So how are we going to do that? So the way we're going to do that is by using two formulas, uh, the Bernoulli equation and the continuity equation. So I'll start with the continuity equation, which basically tells us A1V1 is equal to A2V2. So essentially, it basically tells us the flow rate at any point uh, has to be equal, right? So the surface area or the cross-sectional area multiplied by the velocity at one point has to be equal to the cross-sectional area at another multiplied by the velocity or the velocity of the water at that one point. So this is one of the formulas we're going to use. Uh, and the other one we're going to use is Bernoulli's equation, which basically tells us the pressure at uh, point one plus one half uh, rho, let me make that, rho times V1 squared plus rho GH1 is equal to, so keep in mind one just means point one, which we can consider to be uh, right here at the beginning. And then this would be point two. So it would be P2 or the pressure at point two plus one half rho 2 v2 squared plus rho g h2 so essentially the way this formula works it's kind of like conservation of energy but just for a pipe right so water traveling through a pipe or anything in that matter because um, you can notice that this is kind of like one half mv squared or your kinetic energy while this is your mgh and all you're doing is replacing m with your density so we're going to be using these two formula here uh two formulas here and uh, the way we're going to do it is first is we need to solve for V1. So if we can get V1, we'll be able to plug it into this formula, and then we can solve for our flow rate Q. So keep in mind, this is Q. So we need V1. So if we look at this formula relative to our thing here, notice that the height is going to say constant. So it's all along the same thing. So the height is constant here. So we know that this value... Uh, H1 and H2 are just zero, so they're the same, so they can really just cancel out. So really you just have P1 plus one half rho V1 squared equals P2 plus one half rho 2 V2 squared. And so now that we've got it like this, what we're going to want to do is uh, go ahead and get it in terms of V2 and V1 squared by itself. So the way we're going to do this is by moving P1 to the other side, or sorry, P2 to the other side. So we have P1 minus P2 equals, and then we're gonna move this to the other side. So you will have one half times uh, rho. So keep in mind the rho, I don't know why I wrote rho to here. It's just rho. But we have rho times, and then I'm just factoring out from both of these terms when I move it to the other side. So you will have uh, V2 squared minus V1 squared. 
So keep in mind, all I did was uh, move uh, P2 or the pressure at point two to the other side, and then I minus this to the other side, and then factored out the one half. And so we have this equation now. And so now what I'm gonna do is uh, get rid of this. So I'd multiply both sides by two, and then divide by our uh, row here. So that would give me a V2 minus, or V2 squared minus V1 squared equals two P1 minus P2 over, over row. And so notice here, this is where we run into our problem. So uh, we have V2 and we have V1, but we need to just have it in terms of V1 or else V2 is an unknown, so we actually don't know it. So we need to get this whole thing in terms of V1. So what we're gonna wanna do is replace this um, V2 with V1. So how do we do that? So uh, this is where the this formula comes in. So I know that A1V1 equals A2V2. So if I want to solve for V2, uh, I would just divide by A1. So I would have A1 over A2 equals V1, right? And notice what the area is. This is the cross-sectional area. So as I said before, it was pi over four D1 squared. For this one it would be uh, A2, which is pi over two D2 squared. And so these would just cancel. They just become one. Uh, and then you're multiplying by V1. So your um, V2, right? So let me just write it. V2 is equal to uh, D1 squared over D2 squared times V1. So all I did was rewrite it there um, like that. And so now that we've got it like that, uh, what we're going to want to do is since we solve for V2, we can just plug it back in uh, here and then we'll be able to uh, get it V1 by itself. So plugging that in here, we'll see that uh, we have D1, D1 squared, right? So we have D1 squared divided by D2 squared uh, multiplied by V1, right? So just plugging it in. This whole thing is going to be squared, so I'm just going to simplify it here. So when we square this, this is going to become to the fourth, this is going to become to the fourth, and this is going to be squared. So let me just fix that times V1 squared, right? And then we have just the formula again. So minus V1 squared, we just replaced the V2. So it's kind of lagging a bit. Sorry about that. And uh, so now we've got it like this. And then if we want to solve for the V1, uh, right? So what you can do here is factor out a uh, V1 from each term. So you would get D1 to the fourth minus D2 to the fourth. Uh, minus 1 times v1 squared, right? Because multiply this and then multiply that, you would just get this. So, and then just this again, p1 minus p2 over rho. Uh, and then you would just divide by this, right? Divide by this value and then square root to get our v1. So, it's kind of complicated manipulating this formula, but hopefully it makes sense to you guys. So, you have 2 times p1 minus p2 over rho, right? The density divided by d1. Uh, to the fourth divided by t uh, d2 to the fourth uh, minus one. So this right here is your formula. And so uh, what we want to do now is just plug the values in. So keep in mind, this is v1. And in our formula, we said we need pi over four d1 squared times v1. So uh, if this is your v1, right, to get our answer, we multiply it by, as I said, pi over four times d1 squared D1 is the diameter at point one, which we said was six centimeters. So um, yeah, so six centimeters, I'm just gonna leave it as that. So six CM. And then you're just gonna wanna plug in your value. So the flow rate is power over four, right? Multiple, and this is squared by the way, I'm pretty sure. Or yeah, right. Or it's not squared. Oh yeah, it is squared, sorry about that. So it is D. Uh, so it's six centimeters squared, right? So this is your, uh, what is it? This is your, uh, right, your surface area at point one, or surface, right, so the cut through, the area of the circle basically through it, the surface area. And then V1, or the cross-sectional area, sorry about that, I keep missing, mixing it up. Uh, and then you're multiplying by V1, which we just found. So V1, as we said before, is the square root of two times P1 minus P2, 
keep in mind we want this in pas uh, pascals when we do it so uh, we they give us the values in kilo so we have 32 minus 24 right because at the initial point they tell us it is 32 kilo pascals where it's 24 kilo uh, at the second point so this is 32 kpa and this is 24 kpa so uh, doing that p2 minus p1 you get 32 minus 24 uh, and then we want to multiply by 10 to the 3 to get rid of the uh, kilo just to get it in the normal pascals uh, and then you would divide by the right so the density and so in this case we're dealing with water so it's 1000 kilograms per meter cubed that's the density of water uh, and then you're multiplying by uh, d1 which was six centimeters to the fourth divided by the second one diameter which was 4.5 and then you have minus one so this right here is going to be your answer so you want to just multiply all this out and you should get your correct thing and when you do it, you're going to get Q is about 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed. Now, keep in mind, this is per second since we're looking at a rate. Uh, you do it volume per second. That's how you measure uh, what they're looking for. So your um, answer here, so the volume rate of the flow, 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed per second. That's going to go ahead and be your answer. So just how we did this, we had to use the Bernoulli equation and the continuity equation and basically just substituted the continuity equation manipulated to actually solve for it. Uh, and then we just got the velocity from the Bernoulli and then we just used that back into this formula here, uh, which is your flow rate. So flow rate is just basically the continuity equation. Uh, but yeah, so this right here is going to be your answer. 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed per second. And uh, yeah, hopefully you found this video useful.